Hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Views, the uncle and nephew hosted podcast which picks a random subject and this week random I think is the word and we're <laughs> going to cast our views. I'm the uncle so that makes me Dan and with me is my nephew Lou. <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect timing. <laughs> right this week Lou we are going to talk about weird ways to make money. Before we get into it we'll, we'll cut away to a promo shortly but it stems from an article I think I found in the news that once I stopped laughing, then found weird. I, I think I messaged you and said, how can we work this in? And I think you said, oh, let's let's do it about weird ways to make money. And that then <laughs> kind of really struck a chord. And there's definitely very weird ways to do this. So before we get stuck into that again, because this is going to be a bizarre one, let's, let's get a, a promo from our friend out the way. This week's promo is from Offtopia. So the Offtopia podcast. They're a podcast that basically talk about anything writing art music and a lot more and when i say a lot more i was listening to their last episode or one of the most recent ones and they were talking about cannibalism and there was a question would you eat someone so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah random is the key word there so yeah so let's let's hear from the Octopia podcast and like i said if, if, you, if you like us i'm sure you'll like them so give them a listen Check out the Offtopia podcast where we discuss art, music, and writing. The show is available on all major platforms, and consider joining our Discord and meeting our community. Offtopia. Can't stop, won't stop. And we're back. Right, Lou. Weird ways to make money. I'm not sure if you remember the article I sent you, but this was... I, I, was, I was scrolling through the news one day and saw... Um, do you remember the article I sent you about a woman who was selling jars of, let's call it scented air? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I did a bit of digging around just to, to find out a little bit more background. But basically, it was this uh, this lady. And I, I think it kind of links into the influencers a bit because the two examples, main examples I've got, I think that's what you could probably call them. But it's a lady called Stephanie Matto. Apparently, she shot to fame on a program called 90 Day Fiance. I think that must be something in the States. I don't think we've got that. Oh, no, we've got that on like that TCM channel. Or oh, what, yeah. Or, or not TCM. Um, TLC. TLC, that's the <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's our, that's our American like garbage TV <laughs> channel. <laughs> that we love. Yeah. Yeah, so she appeared on that. Then she became a social media star. Uh, she gained quickly 100,000 followers on TikTok and then over 375,000 subscribers to her YouTube channel. So you think she'd probably make enough money from that. But no, she went on to then become, and I, I can't, can I say this without laughing, a self-described fartrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, well, actually, bottom line, yeah, literally. Bottom line, she was selling jars of farts. Right. So what do you think about that? I mean, I don't know who the target audience is. I imagine it's mostly men, you would imagine, is the target audience. I imagine that's probably the primary people that are purchasing jars of fart. I mean, it's amazing, really, isn't it? Well, first of all, how much? How much? Well, let's have a look. So it involved not just selling the jars of farts, but also selling director's cuts of her filming herself, filling the jars. It's almost like, you know, when you buy an autographed item, you get this, sig this certificate of authenticity. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like the video of authenticity. Oh, here we go. She charged, get this right, $1,000 for the product. That's expensive considering how the average person farts like 24 times a day. I, I was doing that a hell of a lot more the other morning. I tell you, I don't know what I did the night before. <laughs> But yeah, a thousand dollars for a jar. But she offered a here, here we go. It's quite good. She offered a fifty percent discount at Christmas. So <laughs> seasonal promotions. What did she do eat at Christmas dinner the night before <laughs> uh, packaging? Well, she she made she made two hundred thousand dollars. I'm just really confused as to like number one, what promotes you to do that in the first place? Because evidently there must be a market for it. Yeah, well, I think the the next well, we, we'll come on to it soon. But the next one is some something I, I'll say in a similar vein. But yeah, they were getting requests for it, and I think she had got some requests now. The funny thing about this one, no, well, say funny, but the reason why this made the media over here anyway is she ran into problem. Now, you've said yourself that the average person so far is 24 days or, or 24 days, 24 times a day. Now, 
the UK NHS National Health Service here says that while some people fart more than other, I mean, it's brilliant that the, the <laughs> NHS are doing an article on this. The average is five to 15 times a day, right? So it might be enough, to, they say, to keep people out of your room, but it won't be enough for a farting business to scale. So she was, this lady, uh, Stephanie, was producing 50 a week. But to do so, she had to change her diet. So she upped her fiber, she ate more baked beans, eggs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then when she realized that consuming protein shakes could make her, her farts smell worse, she added that to the mix. This is just absolutely grim. One day, she remembered she had three protein shakes and a massive bowl of black bean soup, and she could feel something wasn't right. <laughs> right so she was lying in bed as she could feel a pressure in her stomach moving upwards and she she then was struggling to breathe and every time she tried to breathe she'd feel a pinching sensation around her heart basically that that's why she made press over here because she went to hospital fearing she was having a, a heart attack she said she didn't tell the doctors about the farting in the jar but she told them about the diet <laughs> so basically she was having gas pains but she would advise to change her diet and gas suppressant medication, which effectively ended her business. I mean, did did she have like a platform prior to this? Is this somebody who was like known on like a social media and then started doing this, or is this is what they're kind of known for? No, well that's that's it. So after that program, basically she became a social media star. So she right. had what what was it, hundred thousand followers on TikTok and three hundred seventy five thousand on YouTube. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. I'm sure she was getting in the DMs and comments messages about probably what cert, what people would want from her and maybe this was one of the requests it starts making you think about it right because i'm thinking okay you know in reality she's not it's not the worst thing she could be doing right if somebody if she's gonna fart into a jar and someone's <laughs> gonna buy it fair play right yeah i guess so yeah <laughs> and if Everyone's you can get i'll make that bag <laughs> and if you can get a thousand dollars for it and even at 50% right if you can if you can get $500 for a jar what's the effort costing you a jar's probably what at most say $5 for a jar right yeah I guess so <laughs> I'm guessing she's probably making the customer the customer the customer pay for um the the postage so you know that's quite a bit of profit there <laughs> And you know what? Her business didn't fail by virtue of the fact that, you know, she didn't sell anything. Her business only failed because her body told her no, no more. So evidently the market was still strong. So I'm curious as to whether or not anybody else has taken this on and filled that gap. Filled the jar. Yeah. <laughs> but it does raise a lot of questions. So firstly, yeah, very simple way of making money. We've all got wind right? and we could buy jars. So it's the barrier to entry is really low. Like you said, I mean, yeah, there there are people out there with very specific tastes, aren't there? And, and <laughs> tastes and smells, evidently. <laughs> yeah, and like like I said, though, the fact that she then was so into it. I mean, obviously, the thing is, right, the five to fifteen a day isn't you know isn't a lot, but even if you still only jarred six of them, you'd still be making <laughs> up to. <laughs> you'd still be making up to six thousand dollars a day but the fact that it must have been good enough for her to like completely change her diet but the thing is as well could you imagine you turn around and you accidentally let one go without a jar to hand you're like i've just missed out on a grand <laughs> like that's literally a thousand pounds just gone i'm actually convinced that i saw in a in an article when i was looking up that she did used to then just have jars around around with her just in case uh, <laughs> Just in case. She's taking them out in public and in a, she's in a lift. Imagine if somebody let one go in a lift with her and she was just like, I could have made money off of that. She's probably going, nobody open the fucking doors, right, until I get this jar out. You know, in a lift, it's quite contained. So she's probably saying, nobody move, nobody breathe. Because you're getting that for free. No, but do you know what it is though, right? Is I think we'll talk about another example which was kind of popular because I imagine both of us would have will have gone out and um, done some reading into it. But the thing that's most concerning about this one is the fact that this isn't some sort of like um, gimmick because it costs so much. So it's a thousand dollars a jar. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that's like, you know, a complete gimmick where it's like, haha, selling my farts in a jar. If you're one of my fans, buy it for a fiver. Not that you should or, or would do that anyway. But it's a thousand dollars, so that is considerable money for people to be forking out. I'd be interested to know how many jars in total she sold. You know. Yeah. Do you know what? I I unfortunately didn't get that. Maybe 
towards the end, I might have a quick have a quick look. You know, maybe because it was quite short lived, it it probably wasn't wasn't too long. But she still would have made a fortune. But it's like you said, though, the thing is, right, if somebody messages her and say, <laughs> I can't even say it, but if somebody messages her and says, oh, I'd love to, to smell your farts, right? And she <laughs> says, all right, $1,000. And they say, yeah, then why wouldn't you? I mean, she's... Yeah, to- I guess, you know, this is true. I guess, you know, it's it's of the requests that you will get probably in your Instagram DMs, it's probably the one of the one of the lesser weird ones, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing I love about it is the mention of the director's cut video as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to pay extra for that? No, I think it was part of it. I think it's part uh, of it. Part so of like the I package, said, right. I think it is like a, um, like we said, it's, it's probably your certificate of guarantee. I, See, I, she's I not know. providing just farts in a jar. She's providing a whole experience. Yeah, and I'd love to. Oh, this sounds well, this sounds weird, but I think I'd love to see one one of the video. I mean, what do you get for that? Is it is it like you know, do you get music at the start and the end? You know, is it is yeah, it? Yeah, do you get like an intro outro music? <laughs> <laughs> when I read things like this, and no doubt some of the other things we might mention is what would the person sitting you know the when, when the internet was first being devised and we thought oh wow it's opening the world i could talk to somebody over the other side of the world i can look up anything i could sell my farts in a jar to people what what would the the early pioneers be thinking or like your, you know your parents or, or like your grandparents or my grandparents think about this no do, do you know what it is do you know what we've done as society because i think a couple of our, our, our episodes have proved this do you know you've got that chart of charles darwin's evolution <laughs> yeah 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 what we've done is we've got to man where we are now and the next step that we've just moved into is actually one step back from where we were so we're at the peak of humanity and we've just fallen off the crevice. <laughs> it's it's going to be brilliant, you know, like this this kind of generation or this this kind of moment in time in a hundred years when they're looking back. Oh, what did the, what did the, the you know the people of of, of this world get up to a hundred years ago? They were what they were selling farts in a jar. I mean, it's... <laughs> But do you know what it is as well? Is I, I don't even necessarily have anything like against the woman doing it because okay. she's seen a gap in the market and ultimately she's she's reached it. I do. I am a little bit concerned about the people that she's 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 selling to though. They're the ones in this instance that I'm actually a little bit concerned about because what kind of motivation do you have? I mean, it, it's it's really weird. I mean, once you open it, it's just gone, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. You don't open it. Maybe it's supposed to be like a wine. Maybe you keep it. On the yeah. <laughs> I mean, God. that's the thing. I've actually found an article, right? Yeah, I mean, how she was able to get it in these. These are quite little jars as well. We're not talking like a big jam jar or something. It's it's kind of like little little sort of palm sized jar. Like, does it go in a funnel? Does she just like free? Like, <laughs> does she just free free ball it? Like, just guessing. I don't. I'd, it's like, I know what you mean about wanting to see one of the videos. I'd like to see how it works logistically. <laughs> yeah. or, or, maybe, or maybe you don't. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I've, I've just seen here she was earning up to £38,000 a week. A week? A week. Wow. So what's that? That's about, that's got to be around fifty-three, fifty-five thousand $55,000, I'd say. Yeah, doing, yeah, there are thereabouts. Doing a quick math. But yeah, thirty-eight thousand pounds a week. I seem to be producing enough, probably, to make about fifty or fifty grand a week. Then I say on this basis. Yeah, this is the thing. All you need to do. Do you know what you need to do? You need to apply for like one of these terrible British reality TV shows. Like I don't know. Do you know like a uh, uh, Come Dine with Me or something? And then see if you can pull an uh, pull a pull an Instagram following from it. Funnily enough, as well, it's still as as we talked about influences. It still wouldn't even be the worst thing that influencers have sold. <laughs> you know better than diet pills in my mind oh gosh yeah 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 i mean <laughs> exactly i mean she has also uh, i'm not going to necessarily read the whole story because this isn't it but apparently she has found love through selling the jars of farts after meeting her ad- an admirer on holiday you know it, it it ends well and and and, and absolutely <laughs> just go back to what you said right this isn't a criticism of her i mean there's worse things people have done and are doing yeah yeah but it's that it's that level of almost like i I'd, I'd be like why are these people wanting this you know what kind of people am i saying to what am i what am i kind of perpetuating do you know what i mean by, by doing that uh, honestly i'm actually a little bit flabbergasted with this one but you know what it's probably not the worst one we're going to talk about as well <laughs> no but i feel you know if we're going to go through some of these i feel that's one i could do 
I've, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of in terms of effort versus what you're getting back, I feel like it's low effort, very high reward. I, I'm going to say that's it. the way we should look at them. I'm going to say it here and now. Fifty pound a jar, if anyone. Fifty, can I? 50 pound a jar, but is that is that enough to get you out of your day job? No, probably not. But it's enough to you know sort of <laughs> have, have a good time. <laughs> they're going to be at work, and they're going to be like, Dan bought one of your bottles. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, what's that bag of jars you've got under your desk? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. do, do you know what the weirdest thing is as well? Like, imagine like when you like meet people's families and stuff, or like see relatives that you haven't seen in a while, and they go, "Oh, what do you do for work now?" Yeah, <laughs> like, how do you how do you reasonably have that conversation with them? I'm a fart entrepreneur. I mean... like, well, I won't tell you. How about I show you? <laughs> Could you imagine? Actually, I've just got back into watching Dragons Den. <laughs> now, I think I think for our American followers, I think it's called Shark Tank over there. But basically, yeah, Dragons Den. The concept is a a personal group of people will go to five investors, pitch a business idea, and if they like it, they will give them the money they want for a percentage of the business. Like, can you imagine? Because they always start off with like the equipment or examples of the product on the side, yeah. don't they? So you can imagine they've got these jars with roses in. I think, wow, well, <laughs> I wonder what this this is quite good. <laughs> you know, dragons. I'm here today for a fifty thousand pound ten percent stake in my fart in a jar company. <laughs> you know what? Again, <laughs> again, if you watch Dragons Den in the UK, still not one of the wor- one of the worst ideas that they would have had walking <laughs> to the den, <laughs> and probably one of the ones that guaranteed for output. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know that you'd be turning a profit with them. So example number one, we have fartrepreneur, farting in a jar. So <laughs> I mean, I've got I've got an example. I mean, okay, so in terms of how plausible it would be as a business for you to do in the event that you needed money or you had let's say you lost your job, how plausible do you think it would be for you to sell farts in a jar out of ten? Yeah, I think it's quite high. I mean it's it's about well, I think the problem I've got is, would people want to buy mine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but as a setup, yeah, I could, because like you said, you would just need a container or containers and your your natural body process. So I'd say it's quite, I'd say it's quite high. I'd say it's quite high. <laughs> I don't know. Let's say eight out of 10, because in theory it should be a 10, but the two I'm taking off are because of my conscience will probably still be nagging at me a bit for saying this is what I've become. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, like I said, I think I'm going to take the ones that we're ranking in terms of re- like reward versus effort put in. And I think that this is very low effort, but yeah. very high reward. So I think, yeah, it's yeah. A, 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 you know, if, if you haven't got work, but you can sell farts in a jar, it's, it's you know, it's it's probably a decent little learner for you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, you could probably just hard boil a few eggs and then just stick them in there for a little bit, then take them out. You, yeah, you know yeah, this is, yeah, this is what I mean. There's, there's problems like, do you have to, I guess, if you're looking at doing it officially and you're selling certificates of authenticity with it, do you need to provide some video with every single one that you do? Because that might be the more awkward thing. Like, you know, you're walking around Tesco, other supermarkets are available, and <laughs> all of a sudden you're thinking, I'm out of grand if I don't stop here now. Yeah, if, if I had to do the video... I couldn't look at the camera while I'm doing yeah, it. I'd have yeah, to look yeah. away. I couldn't make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should do it anonymously and pixelate your face. <sighs> oh, well, well, look, we're always up for it. At some point, we've got to provide merch, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd like to set up merch or Patreon. So let us know if you fancy Farts in a Jar from the Casting Views crew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, be, be, be interesting to see if, if one of us sold more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh Oh my god right well 50 pounds moving on from our classy starting story um i'm i'm staying along the same lines as air okay okay and that's because there is a chap in the uk and i've actually seen a company that does this in america and i think the company in america or sorry in canada and i think the company in canada is called vitality air or right. Vitalitaire or something like that. Right. And the company in the UK, as does this Vitalitaire, um, sell jars of <laughs> jars of British country air to Chinese <laughs> to predominantly Chinese buyers at the low, low price of eighty pounds per bottle. Wow. So the idea in terms of the UK and the first person that came up with it was a British chap, Leo de Watts. Um, he was twenty seven. Um, which probably tells you all you need to know because he's probably come out of uni thought don't like where my career is going what can I do (laughs) unbelievable and um, he launched a company and says that 
basically the jars, I mean, this is um, about a year ago, I think this story was done, but his jars have basically been flying off of the shelves and he's been selling them to Chinese buyers. And I guess it, the way that it's presented in the article is the fact that a lot of big Chinese cities have got a lot of air pollution. So what they do is... <laughs> so ridiculous they set off with a car full of empty jars at five o'clock in the morning yeah. and the team harvests and you can't see me if you're listening to this but i'm going to say harvests in quotation marks air in large nets and seals it in glass jars before shipping it across the world unbelievable quite often a lot of our orders are bespoke we have clients who request very particular circumstances for their air sometimes we'll be at the top of a mountain other times at the bottom of a valley and they're selling them for the price of 80 great British pounds, which for those probably listening in the States is, what, $120 maybe? Yeah, 120 130 something like that. But yeah, That's hoping beautiful. to cash in on Chinese New Year festivities, the company's now promoting a 15-jar gift set for Take a Deep Breath, the discounted cost of £888. And you know that they've done that for a reason, because the number eight is popular in Chinese yeah, like, culture. Yeah. It's important, isn't it? I just think it's... Um, it's Honestly, I just I don't understand, but I but I guess if there's a market for it and people are willing to do it, I mean, there's video of him again in this article, literally just in a in a field in the middle of the British countryside, and there's a woman behind him with like this plastic, basically a bin liner. I just think oh, I don't, oh, I just don't understand. How, what's he doing with it? Is he just opening the bottle and letting the air filter in? Is he swooshing the bottle through the air? Is he? getting a fan and blowing the air into the bowl was he no so so from what i understand is they catch the air in the nets <laughs> and then um then they they seal it in the glass jars after catching it in the nets i don't think they're nets i think they're like plastic bags basically once opened a jar of pure british air might last just a few seconds and it's understood many customers are purchasing the product more as a novelty gift that will sit in homes unopened but he's basically just selling plain mason jars you know the ones that like <laughs> yeah. italian people put loads of yeah, like um yeah stuff in oil in <laughs> yeah yeah the last sentence probably makes makes sense if it if it is novelty that's fair enough but i would say i've got a problem with this one more than the one i raised because like you said at the start there's pollution a lot of air pollution there so they're, they're buying that he, he is marking that seriously as yeah. british air in a bottle or country air in a bottle so he is <laughs> he is genu- genuinely saying that's what his product is he's not he's not i guess he's not marketing himself as a, a gift a novelty company yeah yeah like it's genuinely serious thing de watts originally from dorset on the southern coast of england um for anybody that didn't know um now lives in hong kong where he can be found selling his bottles of fresh air at local street markets unbelievable i mean at least with my example at least you got something for it i mean it might be a rank smell but at least you got something (laughs) yeah i mean in reality this guy's literally just sending empty mason jars like unopened (laughs) from supplier to chinese purchaser for what 80 pounds a pop and it's like you said, the use of the wording. I mean, I can imagine his advert reads like a Marks and Spencer advert. Yeah, that's the thing. For the, so for this one, I think that what they, what he's doing, he's actually playing on a culture. Because even with the price point as well, £80, yeah, yeah. he's doing a special at £888. Like when you look at the significance of the number eight in Chinese culture. Isn't it lucky? I think yeah, really, lucky. really important in yeah. Chinese culture. So as a result, I just feel like it's a complete cash grab at yeah. the expense of what are people who hold culture to be and, and tradition very, very valuable to them. And that's why I don't like it. I mean, there's a company and I think if you ever seen, I think it's the rapper two chains. He does a series um, like the most expensive things in the world. Uh, I've not seen it, but I think I've heard uh, you may yeah, like, it to me. Yeah. yeah. Like ice creams and that sort of thing. So they actually had, I believe vitality air, which are the Canadian company and they sell their air in, do you know, like a, almost like a deodorant canister okay yeah yeah um so they actually like pressurize theirs and they actually give you like a face fitting so that you can put kind of like a an oxygen mask looking thing and spray <laughs> canadian air directly into your face basically but this is a little bit more reasonably priced so between 14 and 20 dollars per canister okay, okay you know apparently canadian okay. air is a little bit cheaper than british air coming up with that set for 888 pounds i mean that's just ridiculous that's well, ridiculous. I mean, you know what? It's actually a pretty big discount if you were to buy the 18 jars <laughs> separately. So if you are looking to buy jarred air for lots of family members, you you are looking at what? Like a, 
uh, £400 discount there, there or thereabouts. To be fair, he's doing it in a nice part of the country. So, you know, the premium is is, is there, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You know, he's not doing it on an industrial estate. He's actually going out to, you know, like the countryside as as proved by his promotional video. Yeah, it's, it's just very, very weird. I mean... Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah I, I don't... <laughs> I don't agree with this one. Like I said, if he was, if he was marketing it as a gimmick, I mean, I'd like to see the website actually. So maybe uh, we might even tweet it out when the episode goes out. If he was describing himself as a, a funny gift for for those who you know want to long for England or something, but he's not. Yeah, I think that that's where the problem is for me. Like you're you're marketing it as something serious when it's actually not and it's just a complete like piss take of people's culture basically and that's why i don't like this this one and like like i said with the fart one you kind of know what you're signing up for there is no way to disguise the fact yeah. that you are literally being sold farts if that makes yeah, sense yeah, yeah. whereas this one the guy's almost selling you like the promise of like health and happiness because you're purchasing a jar of british air that will make you feel better basically if you open it and i don't like that i don't like that at all yeah, and he's given him the right to harvest that air as well. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Surely, surely he has to turn around and pay the government something for that because is 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 air not all owned by the government? I don't know. I don't know. Then again, we don't we don't pay tax for breathing, so maybe it isn't. Oh, yeah. maybe you can maybe <laughs> yeah. you can just jar air. And so, but like, do you know what? It's, do you know what's funny as well? It's like, what do you fill out on the import sheet? <laughs> yeah. because if the, yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. if you turn around and you've got customs right, and you go into another country and it says what's in this? It's twelve glass mason jars full of somerset air they're definitely going no this is drugs this is drugs when it was not his drugs <laughs> that's that's actually interesting because yeah because then if not he'd have to call them 10 empty bottles which yeah then, yeah, yeah. You know, which then goes against what he's doing yeah i don't i don't know i don't i don't know if brexit has maybe affected as well his ability to import air across the world or export air I'd be interested to know that as well. I may, maybe the company doesn't exist. I mean, is I, is there I a governing body? Anymore. Is there a governing body for this? I mean, is there a regulation for for bottled air? <laughs> yeah, I mean, is the quality of the air tested as well? You know, how do we know it's not more polluted than than what what the average quality air quality is? I don't know. I don't like it. I don't. You know, like you know what this one feels do. unethical. <laughs> yeah, you know what we should do is set up in the county next one next county over and sell it at seventy quid a bottle. Yeah, yeah, we should just undercut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. If people are buying it, fair enough. If it's all above board in the sense of he's got a website, he's he, you know someone's buying it. It's that reason. I, I know I've said it before, but it's that if he's if he's selling it as a legitimate thing, come on. Yeah, and at least the company in Ca- in Canada is actually putting it in in you know jars that you can actually take in the ox the the air and oxygen or whatever's in the jar. I don't know. <laughs> and you can actually breathe it in to some extent. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. to me, it's still immoral because they're still charging you fourteen pounds for basically what is an empty can of deodorant that's been pressurised. But yeah, I, I don't like this one. I think it's a little bit immoral with the way that it's presented as well. Maybe this Canadian company should have teamed up with my example for the, <laughs> the direct. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they should reach out and provide influencers with the facility to put their farts in pressurised containers. Do you remember the back in the? Well, no, you probably don't. But back in the day, the glass bottles, you could return them and get like 10p to the shop. I wonder if he offers that. You return it, you get like 10 quid back or something. Yeah, yeah. What they do is they just charge you for the air and not the jar. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to remember the jar, I think, is probably worth pittance compared to that beautiful, fresh summer set air. Yeah. And again, like <laughs> you said to mine, I mean, that's if I gave eight to my one, I'll have to give that a nine because it's even easier because he's not going to go to hospital because he's eaten too, ma- too many baked beans or... Oh, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of my scale of effort versus reward, this is, I think, even less effort than the fart one. Yeah. Um, and cumulatively, probably a longer term reward because you're not, because again, the way in which he's presenting it, he's not presenting it as something that's gimmicky necessarily. He's presenting it to an audience that are actually very serious about that type of thing, to be fair. Whilst he's doing it in an immoral way, in terms of our, my chart, He's he's pretty high on this one because it's very low effort, really really high and long term reward as well. I think. Jeez, it is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, I wonder again how he how he came up with that. Did he see a joke online? Did someone say, oh, "I'd love to," I miss the air back home, or did he just think, "Do you know what? Could I sell bottled air?" <laughs> where, where, where did the idea come from? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really weird. Well, the businessman appears to have chosen his market wisely. Now, this was back when the company, I think, was first started. In December, Beijing issued its first ever red alert because of poor air quality, closing schools and restricting traffic. Then he played on the Chinese New Year, and then he said it's it gives buyers bang for their bang for their buck. Cold, he said. Cold air means we can fit more in the container. When we get warmer, <laughs> we can't fit quite as much in. Like, do you know oh what I mean? I just word. can't. Oh I don't, you know, but but the fact that this article has again mentioned that that that, that the business came about at a point where China was issuing warnings about how poor the air quality was. To me, I don't like that. I think that's a little yeah. bit disturbing. Like I said, I'm not gonna because I've not looked at it, so I'm not gonna say this is what he's doing. But that leads me to think that it, it's it's almost being seen as a as a relief for them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. What they're currently having. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way he's presenting it. Which you know, again, when he turns around and says the jar can only last two or three seconds once open, I, I don't know. I don't. Get it. I just, I, I just like love that the fact colder air you could get more of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know when they tell you to fill up at the petrol station early in the morning because you'll fit more in your tank. Um, I guess he's going along that same kind of principle. You can yeah. fit more in, but how do you measure it? How do you know how much air has gone in a jar? I don't. I don't know. I don't understand. Do all the customers? Do they look at each other and say, "Oh, I've got some bottles of the air. Do you want to come around and have a look?" They look at it and say, "That's a good vintage, that one." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I wonder if you're right. I mean, I've not seen any pictures of any bottles. They look like completely plain jars. But I am wondering if he turns around and says, are harvested in Dorset on the 13th of September. It was raining that day or it was completely clear that day. I do wonder if he says that 2017 and people turn around and say, wow, that's some old air. If he was listing the months for people listening, I'd go for May or October. May, you're going to get that nice sort of springtime air. October, you're going to get that nice autumnal feel. That, that's what I'd go for, that one of those two. <laughs> I, I've also got image. You know when you see like wine tasters or winemakers or whiskey makers where they're, they've like got a glass of it or they've got a bottle, they're holding it up to the light and they're swirling yeah, it around. Yeah, I've got yeah. the image of him looking, sniffing the bottle, holding it up to the, to the air, you know, up to the light. Oh man, maybe we again, should do this. <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, it's a struggle to see how you explain that to people. What do you do for a living? I sell air. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what do you? I, I sell air. Yeah. What like scented air? Yeah, yeah, scented like, like no candles. Air. No, no, no. Literally jars of air. I get up at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, I work for an hour. And then um, I send them all off to. Well, he doesn't actually get up and do it, do it himself because he's made so much money. He now yeah. lives in Hong Kong. Yeah. Do you mean? Oh, does he really? Yeah, 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 wow, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we're sitting here mocking. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Maybe this is the truth. Maybe that's the truth as well, isn't it? We're sitting here turning around and slagging off his idea because it's immoral. But in reality, guy's probably living in a mansion in Hong Kong. So, but again, it's it's weird. I think it's one of those things you have to do. You have to do quickly because, as I said, for mine, the barrier to entry is so low that yeah. um, you've got to get in, get in quick, if that's what you're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those two companies seem to be the most um, the most well known ones, the British one and the Canadian one. I don't know if anybody's jumped on the trend ever since. I mean, you know, there's probably um, a lot of international scope. You know, if you wanted to go to Italy, you know, the the the, the breeze of Lake Como, or you know, or or the Amalfi Coast and that sort of thing, places in the world. <laughs> Monacan Air, Monacan Mon- Montegascan Air. Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's um, you imagine when he's going through um. Going through customs, that this guy puts it in the, his luggage in the scanner machine. It's just like fifty empty bottles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and could you imagine when he's coming back and he's filled them? Is he like, is he making out that it's weighing heavy? It's heavier. Is he like having to like drag it along because it's now full <laughs> of air? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't, I don't like this one just because of the way that it's presented. I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll give a little bit more of um, a, a, a leeway to the Canadian company just because the price point's yeah, a little yeah, better and yeah, they provide yeah. you with uh, something to, to 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 put the air up your nose. Um, but yeah, I still think it's it's uh, it's uh, re- an immoral thing based on the way that yeah. he's presented it. Okay, so number two, selling British air to the foreign market. <laughs> Oh my god! All right, what 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 one have you got next? Right, I've got one. Now I'm going to say a name, and now I know this name is probably going to be more famous for other things at the moment. But I'm going to say it specifically for for one thing she did. Right, it's another famous internet personality, and I'm going to say the name Belle Delphine. I know where you're going with this. I think. Right, so I know she's now kind of she's 
an adult model. She's a streamer, influencer. I, I remember seeing an article, and well, actually, it actually wasn't even an article. I think I remember seeing it hit Twitter. Was she sold Gamer Girl bathwater, didn't she? She did. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and that's what I present as my second uh, money making, odd money making thing selling used bath water do you know what it is as well i remember when this all kicked off was this 2019 there or thereabouts yeah i think yes spot on july 2019 yeah yeah i remember this kicking off because bell delphine was actually one of the most famous people on the internet for a really short period of time like i feel like it was like six months where it's the only person anyone talked with and she had, did collaborations with loads of youtubes as yeah. well and i remember the whole bath water thing because it actually hit like proper mainstream news like newspapers were writing articles um on it um and how much was she selling it for was it like 30 quid yeah it's quite reasonable actually compared to the first two things she was selling it at 30 dollars, which was about 24 pounds okay. yeah and the first run of the water sold out in three days and that's not bad i mean you know not as quick as a playstation 5 but pretty pretty damn quick to be fair yeah and i, I didn't know she was um british actually i, I just assumed yeah. she was american she sold so the little glass pots of Gamer Girl bath water. So she, she sold them for twenty four pounds, and actually, I, that I've only got it for two days. But in two days, she sold five hundred bottles. So that's twelve grand. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. pretty impressive. Sorry, five hundred. Did you say? Yeah, five hundred bottles. Yeah, it's twelve thousand pounds. Yeah, she describes herself as a girl who pretends to be a cat. She made like weird videos with octopuses and stuff, didn't she? Or like yeah. a dead octopus. Oh, yes, was... that, yeah. Do you remember? It was just like her sitting in bed with a dead octopus, and then like yeah. her cooking in the kitchen with a dead octopus. Oh, just very weird, very well, weird. Well, this was it. So she she made money by selling subscriptions to a not safe for work Snapchat, only only fans, Patreon, etc. But it was as, as you said, you got it spot on. July two thousand nineteen, she launched her online storefront, which included a product dubbed Gamer Girl Bathwater. Um, she said that the idea to sell the bathwater came from a number of fan comments on her photo saying they would drink her bathwater, <laughs> um, bringing new meaning to the word thirsty. Um, sharing the news on Instagram and her other social media, she shared images of herself sitting in a bath and posing with a glass of jar water that included a branded cap. Um, I mean, she said, to be fair to her, she said the water is not for drinking and should only be used for sentimental purposes. Actually, and, it, and it's funny because she was asked, I think this article I got was from the Metro. And when asked by the Metro why she decided to sell this unusual product, to be fair, she said, this is what humanity has come to yeah you know fair what enough, fair play fair yeah I, I think it's spot on and do you know what do you know what i also remember from this whole thing as well is how many people tried to cash grab by drinking it on camera yeah so yeah. there were loads of like huge youtubers that actually did videos of drinking the water turning around because they knew that it would get them loads and loads of views and i think to myself that's almost just as bad as selling it in the first place because i feel like this one's been kind of done to prove a point because the price point isn't stupid yeah yeah right um, it's been done as the, uh, for the sake of literally just a bit of a fame grab. It's just a story. It sells headlines, and that's yeah, what she used news. to do. That's it's yeah, news. honestly, that's all she used to be on the internet for. It just used to be doing something controversial, not even controversial, something super weird for the sake of doing it to get people to talk about her. And to be fair, I actually think at the time she played it to a T. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I, I I'm not going to say I followed the news. I just remember it being um, a thing on Twitter, quite quite short-lived but i remember it exploding and quite rightly you know it's kind of um an attention grabbing story when you see it she said it actually comes from a joke or a meme in gaming uh, yes yeah, so there's a joke in the community among gamers where they will comment on a post saying let me drink your bath water she said although it's a joke i found it turn the idea of turning it into reality and actually letting people own my bath water funny yeah for me this is completely different this is completely different to even the air one now the air it i don't know what's a more stupid product i guess with the water at least you get water i don't know is water well on there i don't know whatever you and value more air or water i mean you need both of them to live you get a branded bottle cap oh with the bath water yeah she, she has a branded bottle cap so. oh okay well with the air one you just got an empty mason jar so i guess to be fair then i think the bath water is better value for money it's also cheaper as well but yeah i, I can't i can't really have a complaint with this one because i think that it, in reality she had a huge audience it uh, and you know if you look at again at youtuber merch is it probably the worst thing that's ever been sold as youtuber <laughs> merch Pro probably not <laughs> you know um so yeah I, I can't really have a problem with this one i mean again this is super super low effort 
in terms of reward, 20, 12,000 pounds in three days is pretty impressive. So again, it's pretty high reward. I reckon if she'd have continued doing it, she, she would have continued to sell out probably. I mean, you know, again, in terms of the type of person buying it, are they young fans that are that purchased it online with like mum and dad's credit card that might be the only thing that you might have a have a have an issue with but again they shouldn't be using and making purchases online if they're too young to anyway i think for me the underlying thing along with the first example is there's an uneasy feeling there'll always be an uneasy feeling about who's buying a woman's farts in a jar who's buying a woman's used bath water there's that there's an uneasy feeling about that right but in the end, if no one's harming her, she's doing you know, she's doing it because she wants to do it. She's making a fortune from it. She's blatantly saying what it is and do not drink it so so there's not a health issue there. And people are buying it. Fair play. Like like you said, they're cashing in on the joke. I think a lot of people because it's at that perfect, like you said, thirty dollars. Uh, I mean, an Xbox game or a PlayStation game costs $70, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I mean. I feel like with that, it gave lots of people the opportunity. And, and, and this is the thing as well, because the people that probably complained about it online and had a moan about it were, were ones that were cashing in by making the videos about it as well. So I don't know what's almost worse, the fact that you're lying about whether or not you think it's a terrible thing and then trying to cash in on the fact that you're reporting on it, or... I don't know. Like I said, I I don't really have too much of a problem with this one. It is weird, obviously, but I think that from her perspective, you know, with the way that she ran herself on the internet for that period of time, I think she was a particularly intelligent person with the way that she ran her image online at that time um, because she had a humongous following. um, And this was, was literally like proper mainstream news. Again, it was, it was literally articles in newspapers. So again, I just think she played everyone to a T and she was dead brutal honest about it. So yeah. unlike the one previously of the guy selling air to Chinese to Chinese people in terms of air pollution and that sort of thing, like the guy's literally lying and saying, oh, my God, health and prosperity. This is amazing. I'm going to make it all something that you're going to play into because, you know, it's a cultural thing. Whereas with Belle Delphine, she's turned around, been honest and said, I think it's a, it's literally a piss taken in of itself. I'm going to sell my bath water because people are actually going to buy it. And yeah, I, you know, I can't can't blame the honesty. And that's the thing. I love I love that comment. This is what humanity's come to. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it was just an experiment on her off at her end as well, just to turn around and think think how ridiculous could this be? Oh, absolutely. And like I said, yeah, if, if she's not coming to harm doing it, you know, and I've seen the pictures, is that they're, they're kind of cute little bottles. They've got a nice branded gamer girl logo. You know, it's like a game controller. <laughs> I mean, the, the efforts in there for for twenty four dollars. There are drinks you could probably go to London and buy a drink for probably about the same price as that. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's the cost of most bottles of mineral water in the supermarket nowadays, anyway. Surely, <laughs> which has probably just come from a tap, anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't don't really have a problem with this one. Um, I think Belle Delphine's probably like in internet like history because I think that this was a yeah. huge thing that like went outside of just like the YouTube, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter sphere as well. Um, that that's the thing. There are there are things if they're clever can cross the cross the different types of media and audiences so like that this story i mean like i said for example i wouldn't have known who she was until i saw this so her name her image her her platforms get out to people that would never have done just by appearing on twitch say yeah 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 this is true this is true for better or worse depending on what the story is i guess Again, it's kind of like what I was saying, actually, and I wasn't thinking about this at the time when I said to you, how did the bloke come up with the idea for bottling the air? I mean, this, you know, she's literally taken something that's posted on her pictures, literally, and has just done it. Yeah, yeah, because there will be comments that are like, I'll drink your bath water. And she's like, yeah, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's like, prove it. <laughs> Although I'm going to give this, in terms of doing it, I'm going to give this probably less because it would need to... You, you, the amount of baths you'd have to have to keep this going. Yeah, but then again, I mean, I'm a shower a kind of guy. I'm a shower kind of guy. So I yeah, don't... I mean, what would you would you keep a bucket in the bottom of the shower, collecting the water as it actually, ran off? You maybe actually no. Like you said, if you see these bottles are quite tiny, so probably one bath will, will probably see you for. Yeah, that's what I mean. I reckon she probably pulled the five hundred jars just from one bath. Yeah, possibly. Oh, actually, as well, just one thing on this story that I remember yeah. is there were actually rumours that circulated on the internet that people that had drunk her bathwater contracted herpes. Oh, that was it, yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, the rumours were all fake. But even that, even the people that probably tried to destroy it as a as a 
like a an idea or as like a gimmick actually benefited her because it just drew drew more traction to the fact that she was selling bathwater. Yeah, yeah. And to me, they they they're the idiots in that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. This one's weird. Like, but like I said, I think just due to the fact that she's perfectly honest about it. Like it's you know it's not something where she's turned around and selling. Oh, I'm selling a fart in a jar for a thousand pounds. Like she's selling it at twenty four quid, which you know in terms of bath water, I don't think my bath water is worth that much. Um, however, you know she is a, a moderate internet celeb, so yeah, don't have any problems yeah, with this yeah. one. And again, I think in terms of my axis, where it's effort versus reward, I think that this could be very very low effort and very very high reward because if she continued to sell bath water, what if she sell different quantities? To a litre, yeah. 500 mil. Oh, yeah, a litre for a litre for $100, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is what I mean. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with this one. I think this is the, the, the first one that I'd probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I think the two I've chosen, Belle Delphine, I remembered. The other one, like I said, I, I came across it while I was flicking through the news. They're both, I don't have issue with, but they've definitely fit the fact that they're odd. You know, yeah, there yeah. is a weird way to make money. You wouldn't have thought about this, you know, 20 years ago. Like I said, and that's why I say I wonder what people I'd love to know sort of what my parents would think about that or my grandparents would have thought about this. You know? They'd be like, he's a disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my second main course, as it were. Right. OK, then I've got um, a few. Belle Delphine was one of the ones that I'd had noted down okay. as well. Okay. Um, but I've got a couple of others which are. One's a bit more of a general example, and then one's a specific one with a particular person. So I'll go for the general one first. And this is professional mourning. I've got that on my list. Now, professional mourning or paid mourning is an occupation that apparently originated from Egyptian, Chinese, Mediterranean, and um, um, Egyptian, Chinese, and Mediterranean cultures. Um, and basically was was just just as, as a result of trying to comfort bereaved families, basically, and grieving families. Um, there are actually a couple of companies in the UK that offer professional mourners to turn up to funerals. Now, I don't know if you as somebody who's, you know, if you know that you're dying would, would go out and, and, um, and, and pay for this service or if it would be your family that did that, if they didn't think many people would turn up. But I've got a little bit in terms of rent a mourner for a funeral um, and what this company does. So the company's called Envisage um, and they actually have a load of actors that do lots of work across lots of different things. They've got performers that will do Santa, uh, mascots and that sort of things. But they also also offer a rent a mourner for a funeral. Now, it doesn't have to be a single mourner. It can actually be multiple. <laughs> This is sorry because there's people that probably do seriously use the service. We can supply professional grievers anywhere in the UK. We understand that this is a service that needs to offer discretion, sensitivity, and understanding. We'll take a full brief from you in advance of the funeral and we will take time to brief mourners. You can advise of how much or how little they need to know about the deceased. We ensure our staff are fully briefed and well rehearsed in advance. They're discreet, professional, and will arrive dressed fitting the service. Imagine if they've turned around and got the wrong brief, they've turned up to a funeral just to Santa. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a wrestler or something. <laughs> yeah. Our mourners will arrive dressed and can attend churches, crematoriums, and even continue to the wake. Our people will mix with the other guests as much or as little as you wish and keep their status confidential at you uh, at all times. We had a client who had a close family member pass away, but they had next to no relatives or friends. He wanted the CCTs to have a good send off, so he hired a crowd of people so he could be left with a good memory. I mean, it's quite it's quite nice in terms of, I guess, the reason that it was set up by this particular company. Yeah. However, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if what qualifications do you need? Do you need to be you know an actor that would be qualified to do tv adverts or an actor that would be qualified to do stage performance like you know is it easy enough to, does it depend on what you need to do if they turn around and say we just want someone to turn up and cry at the back of the church i'm, I'm pretty sure anyone could do that maybe. i think it does it's exactly that so the one i had was actually the bit i don't understand is they've ceased to operate because of overwhelming demand so i would have thought if you've got overwhelming demand why have you ceased operating but they were actually called rent a mourner in in the uk the one thing that they said they said the most common reason and it's, it's it's what you said at the end was when the deceased had outlived family or friends and, and i think in that right, case okay. you know that's yeah i mean that's quite sad in and of itself right that they've got if they've got no one around them but then it's kind of quite touching depending on you know if if somebody has arranged for that just to make sure they have got someone there do you know, do you know what i mean it's, yeah yeah i guess so i mean <laughs> i don't know I don't, I don't know if i'm on board with the idea as much i think i'd probably be happy to do it 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> if someone wanted me to turn up to a funeral and, 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 you know, if they were willing to brief me on, on what I needed to know about a person and that sort of thing, I think it'd probably be something I'd be willing to do. Um, just because again, this one seems, doesn't seem particularly immoral to me. It's literally just for the sake of comfort. And I think the families probably have it organized, you know, like the example that I read out about somebody who's worried that nobody will turn up to the funeral because everybody else is dead, basically. So I can, I can kind of get on board with this one. But yeah. I mean, it is a strange one. Again, telling people what you do, you turn around and, you know, and, and again, do you know, do you know, what I'd love to see is like, how many people can you, can you hire at once? Can you hire a hundred? Is it just 10? Is it three? I don't, <laughs> it does make you think about, yeah, what are the packages they offered, you know? And, and like I said, do you, depending on, on what it is, do you go back to the the house? Do you go to the wake? I don't know. It's, you know, are you, are you there solely for, to, to make a number I don't know what, what's quite funny and I won't know the name of the person so I don't know but I saw on TikTok today so, someone saying it's quite fortuitous timing someone said when I die I'll, I'm going to hire someone to stand some distance in a long black coat and an umbrella just to make it look like I had something going on in my life you know to, to watch it. <laughs> that's great can you imagine yeah hiring someone to make it look like you were part of some organization or shadow you know spy or something you, know, <laughs> you could have fun with that i guess <laughs> yeah you know what again yeah i think that in terms of maybe like a gimmick like that i can get on board with that because also maybe you maybe there's an opportunity to do something funny with mourners that you can rent you know if you wanted to, if you let's say you knew that you were dying you wanted to do something funny at your funeral i think there's probably scope for that sort of thing as well like if i like if it was me i'd have like 13 people all turn up dressed as like you know like cowboys and stuff like that. I just think yeah. it'd be funny to have a, a group of people turn up at your funeral like that. But yeah, I think it depends on, on what they'd be willing to do as well would be would be quite cool because I think that that's something that, you know, see, turned see, up I... as a mascot for your fru- funeral. Yeah. And I, I also, the one I had, there is actually an official title for it. And, and I, I know I'm not going to say it right, but I think it's pronounced Morologists. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. that's how I've read it as well. But yeah. I didn't say that word because it looked too confusing to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a, again. I think it definitely fits into the category of, yeah, I haven't got a problem with it. I think it's depending on the reason. It's 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 quite sad to have this, you know, especially in the sense of if they had no one. It's, yeah, it's quite yeah. sad. But like you said, maybe you could have fun with it if if you're of that sort of nature, you know, hiring. Yeah. Them. You know, yeah, you could have <laughs> someone dress up as the Undertaker. I'd have someone dressed up in it, like with a sickle and a black hood. <laughs> well, I, well, I was going for wrestlers, you know, like Kane. You could have yeah, a group yeah, of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, don't have a yeah, don't have an issue with it because it is a service that people are obviously using. And like I said, it's interesting that it's got the tradition in you know the Mediterranean, Eastern, and, and, and Chinese cultures. So it's something that these cultures did. But now we're kind of catching up, but making money from it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think this one's pretty fair. I think I'd be probably quite happy to do this as a as yeah, a an yeah. occupation. To be fair, I don't really see anything wrong with it. I feel like it's probably a comfort for families that have it organised. I think it's probably comfort for a, for a person that that might be potentially, you know, looking at death um, in in terms of the near future as well. So yeah, I, I'd probably do this one. And to be fair, again, even on my axis, it's a little bit more effort than all of the previous. It's probably mid-level effort, but I think the return's quite nice. And I think you probably get a feel-good factor out of it, as weird as that might sound. Oh, no, I was literally thinking that. Yeah, without wanting it to sound weird is, you know, you are doing it for a reason. And that reason is, well, the people doing it are doing it because they're getting paid, no doubt. Well, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're doing it because there is a void. There is there is a, a need for someone to want to have people at a funeral. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're kind of doing a good-hearted thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. I'm perfectly fine with this one. Yeah, perfectly fine. Might, might have to apply now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But must have a black suit. Must be able to cry on yeah. command. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me shoot one at you. Right. Um, so, well, I was going to say similar of a similar vein. Rent a friend. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Because my my example kind of tails off on this, but I'll let you go first, and then I'll bring my exact my exact example in. Okay, well, no, use yours, use yours then. It's fine because I've got I've got a few I've got quite a few. So use your example, then I'll I'll chip in if mine's slightly different. Right. Okay. Well, I've got I've got somebody who who, who can act as a as a rent a friend, um, but it's basically a Japanese man, and he's basically rents himself out as a do nothing man. 
or oh, rent okay. a man. Okay. So okay. basically, he, he doesn't have to really do anything. And he says he, he lends himself out to do nothing, which means I don't really make any special effort. I don't initiate conversation. I just reply to chit chat. But that's about at, but that's about it. So what people do is they pay him to join them in activities. So from having a meal to to going, I don't know, like, you know, sightseeing, that sort of thing. Um, he started the job in 2018, basically when he was unemployed, um, and he opened a Twitter account literally called Do Nothing Rent a Man to advertise <laughs> himself. And he now has a huge range of clients, basically. He said some people are sat, uh, basically lonesome. He said some people it's a, it feel it's a shame to go somewhere interesting alone and they want someone to show, share their experience with, basically. Yeah. Um, apparently, he's completed more than 3,000 gigs so far, and his past gigs <laughs> include sharing a coffee in silence, listening to a busker, sharing cake with someone on their birthday, which is actually really quite sad, that one, <laughs> accompanying people to restaurants and shops and joining a client on a swing set, as in like a swing set in a park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He's, he's turned down requests such as cleaning houses, doing laundry, um, and becoming someone's friend outright, um, okay, because he okay. says he's not necessarily a friend and, and, and or an acquaintance. Um, he said uh, he, he basically described himself as being I'm free of the bothersome things that accompany relationships but can ease people's sense of loneliness yeah that's that's fair enough as, again he's being honest with it yeah and that's the thing with this one as well again it's 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 being fair and honest and I, pr- I think there's probably lots of people in the world that are in particular circumstances yeah, yeah. that don't have company and I think do you know what it is is, is there's I think that when people look at that people think that there's only weird places to go for that sort of thing yeah yeah if that makes sense. Whereas this kind of fills the gap in the relatively normal market. Like somebody doesn't have any mates that are interested in art. They just want someone to go with who will say yes. And they pay him to go and say yes, basically. Yeah, because you hear it a lot, don't you? That someone is uncomfortable. They don't want to go to the cinema on their own or don't want to go to a restaurant on their own. So you're literally paying to have a presence there. So you don't feel like you're being stared at because you're there on your own. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the one I had was actually, no, it's, it's actually called Rent-A-Friend and it is a business and it was created in New Jersey. Yeah. And again, though, it does, I think it does link to what you've just said quite weirdly because he said um, this this person had noticed, oh, and, and this, this website still exists, by the way, because a couple of these I checked to see if they were still about. He noticed that friend renting companies were very popular in Japan, usually standing for a missing family member. But the U.S. market didn't have such a thing. So Rent a Friend was created to cater for those in the U.S. who might be in need of a friend. It became very popular and is now worldwide, which means in the U.K. we can also now get paid to be a friend. People, (laughs) People looking for a friend pay a monthly fee to the site to look for and get in contact with friends near them. When they find someone they'd like to have as a friend, they agree to pay the friend hourly rate. And if both parties are happy, they hang out. As a friend, you're able to sign up to the site completely free. So only those who are looking for friends pay. Okay, right, right. So you sign up for free and advertise yourself to whoever might be interested. Um, And if someone wants to hire you, you're able to charge them for the privilege of your company. So basically, you set the hours, the price, and you keep all the money you make. That's not bad. It's a bit like, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, there are obviously comparisons that you could bring it to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's, 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 I'm actually on the website now, and, you know, you, you've you got, yeah, you've got people, coffee house, bowling, hiking, hot air ballooning, yeah. photography, zoo, workout partner. And there's people turning around and saying, you know, invite me as a friend. I'll make outdoor activities like jogging, biking, playing sports. We'll have a great time together. <laughs> This is it. And this is the key thing to say is they said it isn't just for lonely people. They said, for example, someone might be staying in town for a few days and you want to show them around or just to have you as company. Somebody might be wanting to learn a new skill and ask you to teach it. Some people might want a workout buddy for the gym or others might just want someone to join them to go to a movie or eat out. The minimum charge is usually $10 or £8.20 an hour. And that means the people who are rent a friend full time can make a, a minimum of three hundred and seven pounds fifty a week. Those who do it for an extra source of income just at the weekend can make hundred and thirty pounds a week. Wow. And it's quite interesting because like I said, the fact that they say you, you hear rent a friend and w- there's a company where you can hire someone to be a friend, it does sound like, oh, they must be lonely, desperate people. But like I've said there, you might be advertising you could you can play the guitar, you can play the, the drums, uh you know, you know a great place where you can go abseiling and that person may want someone to do it because they don't want to do it on their own. You know, it's it's, 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 it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, again, you know what, with this one, I don't mind it because I guess there's, there's well, I guess, real world situations in which this might be applicable for a particular 
like person given their circumstances yeah. that sort of yeah. thing so yeah and i think this one's pretty honest as well in terms of why people are doing it and it's also not extortionately expensive either i guess you know if you're paying what is there or thereabouts a tenner for some of these you know um company for an hour it's pretty much day and rate nowadays isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it sounds like it sounds like a minimum wage but again as long as long as no one's getting hurt the fact that you can sign up the the person who is the friend they're not being charged so that's quite refreshing you're offering your time you're being paid by the friend wanter for want of a better word yeah and you're not paying the website money as well. Do, do, do you know what I mean? That's quite refreshing. Yeah, they're basically just a hosting service to cure loneliness. Yeah, I'm perfectly on board with this one. It, I mean, the only thing that is, I don't know how they regulate it and that sort of thing, because I imagine there are people that probably use rent-a-friend services for like nefarious reasons and yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I don't know how like you verify people and that sort of thing. But yeah, again, don't don't really have a particular problem with this one. I'd you know, if somebody wanted to pay me a tenner an hour and I'm doing nothing on a Saturday, um, just because they they wanted to go to the cinema, I'd be like, yeah, twenty quid sorted. <laughs> Imagine that. So you go to the cinema, you'd probably pay, you'd, you'd probably charge an hour each side for travel, right? So you got two hours. A film's going to be what anywhere between ninety minutes minimum to three hours. So just that one that one higher, you're probably making. Anywhere between sort of five to six hours pay. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It's not bad <laughs> not going. Bad, not bad. It's not bad going at all. Yeah, and and like I said, I you know, I mean, and, and to be fair, there's actually probably a practical application for the people that are offering themselves to be rented out as well. Because I mean, it must have to make you good with new people and new situations. So it must make you a decent confidence boost, or, or teach you how to be that way in in lots of situations as well. So it's probably a, a decent tangible benefit from the people offering to be uh I guess to be so. rented as well. Yeah, the the one thing I didn't check. So if you're being hired to go to a cinema, I'm assuming the person who's hiring would have to pay for you, right? Because otherwise that's quite unfair because you're probably... Yeah, yeah, I would think so. I would imagine that the person that does the hiring pays for all of the activity if they want to do activity, but basically. But yeah, can you imagine? If I'm, if I'm not doing anything on a Saturday, yeah, why not do it? <laughs> have, have someone pay me to go watch a film with them. <laughs> Yeah, no, don't 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 mind this one. Again, slightly more effort because you physically need to be in a yeah, place. Yeah, but obviously, yeah. you know, you're only seeing a person for a period of a few hours. Um, and in terms of what you'd be doing, you're probably walking around a gallery or a museum or something. So yeah, yeah I'm not. No, no, I'm not just... mad at this one. I, I, you know, again, I if it see paid, myself doing it. Yeah, yeah. If it paid, if it, if you know, if, if all it's going to do is put money in your pocket and also probably give you a cool experience for a couple of hours. Yeah, I could see myself doing this one as well. Well, she got the Japanese one was the last decent one that I had. Um, okay. I had a couple of other like scandal ones online, but they were all a little bit kind of similar to bathwater or people that had sold like dodgy things on the internet, basically. So yeah, I, okay. I mean they're all immoral ones. Well, I've got a few more fun ones. So do you want to hear the fun ones? <laughs> yeah, go on then. Right. So let's get on to the good ones. So especially for for us Brits over here, make money by queuing. <laughs> right. <laughs> So again, it started in the States. So a guy called Robert Samuels created the website Same Old Line Dudes, which offers this service to customers, right? Basically, he was sacked from a job and was looking for a way to make money, right? An original way to make money. So he put an ad on Craigslist offering to stand in line for the new iPhone launch at that time. Yeah, yeah. And a customer, right, agreed to pay him $100 to do this right so we stood in the queue for 19 hours what's weird though was the customer then changed their mind and decided they'd buy the product online but let him keep the money anyway <laughs> fair enough so you got the opportunity to buy an iphone and got paid 100 quid 100 dollars. Yeah. sorry but it gets better <laughs> it gets better he then sold his slot in the queue to another customer <laughs> <laughs> How much did he make from the other person then? Oh, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. But yeah, so he then, based based on that experience, he now set up his own company, which has several employees, and they charge $25 for the first hour and then $10 for every half hour after that. So basically, yeah, you can you can earn up to £160 in a day. This guy from Fulham in West London says most of the queuing jobs have been, what he said is they're often, sorry, for quite rich people is it's often rather than just anyone it's often the, the kind of the more well-off people hire them because they don't necessarily want to be queuing up to get the tickets so he said he's had he worked for people queuing up at the vna museum performances at the apollo and he worked for eight hours queuing at the vna's christian dior exhibition oh okay 
Yeah, he said the queue in itself was just for three hours, but they asked him to collect the tickets and wait for them to arrive. So he had to wait hours perusing the museum. Uh, but being paid twenty pounds an hour each each hour, he had to wait for them. Yeah, I, you know what? I'd I'd hap- I'd, I think this is the first one that I'd happily do because ultimately, you're sitting in a queue, you're not doing anything else. If it's like a mid, in, in, like a nighttime launch where it's like a nineteen hour thing, you're probably sleeping for nine of them anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just think that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, especially, I mean, the brain on that guy, you know, then selling the slot to someone else. Uh, that's just class. That, that's class. Yeah, I like that as well because he's turned around. And, and that's the thing. At first, when you said 19 hours, and I think, yeah, it's $5, $5 an hour, less than that because he's been there for 19 hours. But then if he sold the slot on, even if he sold it for another 100, he still made his $10 an hour and probably a bit more than that, I imagine, from selling the slot on. I mean, the story there isn't being paid a hundred dollars to queue the story there is waiting 19 hours in a queue for an iphone <laughs> yeah yeah i mean so it was this when the first iphone came out did you say it was i i can't remember which one but it was one of the earlier ones yeah well i don't think it was in the last couple of years so yeah it was um yeah i think it was when it would they were big launches but yeah I, again i think it's fine queuing is awful and f- for these events you know I, I, it's, it's unusual though because back in the day where concerts and stuff like that you didn't have like online ticket vendors you had to go to stores or or on the phones but now it is i guess it is more for these kind of things like the marquee products etc that are sold out because i I guess queuing for things is probably a lot less now because you can get everything online yeah that's probably true as well whereas back then like i remember the queues for the first iphones were literally like in america they were like blocks and blocks weren't they yeah people queuing and even for here there have been releases like that here where you know i mean i used to queue up for the call of duty launch every night Um, and it used to take me a couple of hours to get in (laughs) but it was nothing that was on a few so i guess it would depend as well and would you use the service then do you think no because i'm fit and i'm fit and well enough um it will it would depend if it was something you had to queue up and it was during, say, a work day and, and it was you had to queue up. You couldn't buy it online. I might be tempted to do it for that. But if it was an evening or a weekend, I probably wouldn't because, you know, 20 pounds and then 10 pounds every half hour. I, I can stand up. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, that's true. I guess that's true. Would you then? I think it would probably depend. I think if the cost of having someone queue up in line started to exceed the amount of money of the thing that I was buying, um, then probably not. I don't know what what there is in my life that I would ha- that I would pa- that I would queue up for for that long. I mean, when I was at university, I queued up for like our end of end of year club tickets for like ten hours or something like that. Um, would I have paid someone to have queued up for me? Probably not. But I guess it depends how how much you want want whatever it is. You know, I mean. In terms of a PlayStation, I haven't got my hands on one since they came out six months ago. So would I have paid someone 150 quid to queue up in a line for me to go and get one, uh, 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 an Argos or something? Yeah, maybe. I maybe would have considered it. But, but no, this one I wouldn't mind doing. And I also don't think I'd mind necessarily paying someone to do it based on what it might be. But probably for me, the only, actually, I've been thinking, the only application i could see it is remember i mentioned about that every year there's a record store day yeah if there was something i absolutely must must have definitely wanted like i was gutted i said to you last year there was one i missed out only by 20 minutes because I, I i don't want to queue up i'm not going to get there before i turn up two hours after it's open so i know i'm not going to get what i want but for a couple of hours i might be willing to pay someone to stand in the line to get that that one item i really want so that could be an instance I want. So if anybody wants to help me out this record store day, tweet tweet us after the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this one, this one, whilst you have to be there on my index is is typically mid level effort, but probably decent reward as well because you're probably making 10, 15 quid an hour for doing absolutely nothing. These are a couple of simple ones. I'm going to do a couple of simple and fun ones right now. One is make money from selling selfies, but what it is, it's um cool. <laughs> it's it's an well it's an online site called Stylinity and what it is and I think it is still going it was an it's an app that you download to your phone you take pictures of your clothes or the clothes you want to buy and then you tag them with a store and then if someone buys a piece of clothing you're wearing you will earn reward points which can then be turned into objects or cash so if anyone buys any of the items in your picture you'll get twenty percent of the the sale okay which is I think that's a fantastic idea one it's a just a different use of technology and two it's very much of today if you know what i mean 
Yeah, I'm yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I'm not mad at that one either, to be fair. It's just now I need to get some good clothes that I can be pictured in. <laughs> so that, that, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone will buy what I've got in my wardrobe. Here's a, here's a fun one that I'm very tempted to want to do. Uh, get paid to nap. <laughs> I've seen people do this on like Twitch streams, but go on. So in, in April, tw- well, actually, that's a good good use of that. But no, in April 21, a company called Each Night put a job post in saying they basically want a team of nap reviewers who need to be prepared to start work straight away, as well as being committed to napping every day for 30 days. Applicants must be able to sleep alone during the testing period to ensure the naps are undisturbed. All applicants must have strong English writing skills in order to accu- accurately carry out the reviews of their naps. So basically, I think what they were doing was trying, it's almost like a, a medical thing. They were trying to find how powerful or how useful naps were, and I think at different times of day. Imagine being paid to sleep. That's just brilliant. <laughs> Literally, passive income. So all of the TikTok <laughs> gurus would be like, that's what you call passive income. <laughs> yeah, I'd happily do that one. I've actually got extreme skill in that so if it, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look to see if they're still doing this i wonder if you can turn around and be like can literally sleep on command i wonder if that gets you any more money <laughs> look i'm willing to sleep for longer than a half hour you want me to <laughs> yeah this one right i've never heard of and it's a really interesting one right so it's called trade line selling and what this is is the act of adding a stranger as an authorized user on a credit card right <laughs> now it sounds it sounds quite dodgy doesn't it but what it is is basically is to help people with bad credit score increase theirs by piggybacking off your credit. Right, okay. Yeah, so it's what it is, by allowing someone with little or no credit history to build credit as an authorised user on your card, you can make money without having to lift a finger. So basically, customers can pay as much as $1,000 for this. And while it may seem steep, a borrower who secures a low interest rate on a loan may save thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars in interest over the lifetime of the loan. That's not even to mention the benefit of getting a high credit score. Now, you, you start thinking, oh, is this not a fraud? No, because as the trade line seller, you get the physical card mailed to you. Right, okay. So the person who you're adding never sees a card. Okay. And the amount you can earn per trade line varies. Some say you can earn between 125 to 275 per trade line. So, so yeah, so think of it as you, you've got a credit card. I've got a bad credit history, but want to up that. So I apply as a a borrower on your card, but I don't ever have the card, so I can't spend the money. It's just to give me that credit rating. Right. Okay. Okay. I understand. Right. I think that's amazing. That's a really fascinating one. That that one's a little bit strange to me because I'd still feel like I'd need to read like the fine print about that one because it still feels a little bit shady still somehow. Because it so so they're authorized te- so technically they're authorized as a holder on that account then yeah well here I can add you know my other half I can add her as a as another user on my card but I'm the account holder so right they all, okay all I say all, all she can do is spend money on the card right but she can't turn around and ring the bank and do anything exactly, or ring the yeah. credit provider right yeah. okay okay that yeah. makes sense that yeah okay fair enough right yeah. But if you think about it, in this day and age where credit rating is everything, and like they said, you know, if you've got bad credit rating, even here, the loans you can get, etc., the interest rate on them are extortionate. Yeah, yeah. And that, do you know what it is as well? You can, I, I don't know if you use like the clear score app, but you can see like the average for your area and, and like the national average and that sort of thing. It's true, you know, like ultimately it's all based on what what that number says on your clear score yeah, app as to yeah. whether or not you're actually going to get approved for any kind of loan so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can understand this one because i guess it's true over the course of a period of time if you're going to get fixed on a high interest rate you're going to pay a lot of money back over the period of like a, a loan that you take over a number of years so yeah i guess this one's got good practical application as well and no, no effort yeah yeah and, and and that's the thing right and it is weird how to prove you're okay to be loaned money you have to prove that you've got a track record of wanting to borrow money. So I remember when I applied for a mortgage, I hadn't had, you know, because I'd lived at home all my life, you know, I hadn't hadn't rented, I hadn't needed a card. I remember the mortgage advisor said, look, you're going to need to open a credit card to show the banks that you you can have credit. And so I actually had to take a credit card just to be yeah. able to loan, get a loan for a, for a mortgage. Yeah, I just, I just think this this isn't even something I would have thought of. So I just think it's fascinating that this kind of, businesses out there yeah 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, to be fair, I see the application for it, and, but is there not any kind of like legal thing that's an issue? Is that not like fraudulent in any way? No, I, well, I, that's the thing. I don't know enough about how that bit is done. So, like here, I'm. I don't know if you could just add a random person who lived at the other. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you could. I've never, you know, I've, I've not looked into it. Yeah, you, you, you do think, or your mind, because we especially we did the frauds and scams and con one. You do wonder, is there a way to be cheated on this but if, if if the person never gets a card and they can't administer the account it feels quite quite a safe one yeah know. but in terms of fraud from the perspective of are you allowed to put somebody on an account like that just for that purpose when that person has got a bad credit rating so you're kind of artificially attempting to bump them do you know what i mean would would a bank potentially look at that as you being yeah. an accomplice to that but but then again i guess if you're not doing anything illegal there I guess it would have been shut if it was illegal. I guess it would have already been shut down at this point, wouldn't it? So, <laughs> for anyone listening, especially in the states where this originates from, if you've got any knowledge of it, please do let me know because this this one I, I thought was fascinating when I read it. The next one, I want to send you a picture. So, have you got your phone nearby? I do. Here we go. I've sent you a picture. This one is called Goat to Meeting. Now, what it is is an animal sanctuary in Silicon Valley called Sweet Farm is letting people pay to get llamas and goats and other farm animals to tune into their video calls for under a hundred dollars. <laughs> um, since launching a service called Goat to Meet in Sweet Farm has fielded more than 300 requests for animal cam- cameos and virtual field trips in work happy hours and corporate meetings. So have you got a picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks a little bit fake to begin with, but knowing that it's actually real, that makes the picture even better, to be fair. So so for those listening, and I'll, I will, I'll, I probably will try to stick, stick this out on Twitter. It, just imagine, I, I don't know if it's Zoom, it's, it's not Teams, but maybe it's Zoom, and you've got uh, what six people or five people at the top, and the main picture is a llama <laughs> looking at the camera. <laughs> In this day and age, with COVID, working from home, more remote isolation, I mean, a hundred dollars is quite pricey. But can you imagine you you turn into your team meeting tomorrow morning and there's a goat looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't mind this one. I think this is cool. I think this is actually quite, I mean, yeah, like you say, in terms of COVID where people couldn't be in the office, I think for perking up employees and that sort of thing, um, this one's actually quite a cool one, to be fair. Cool gimmick. Yeah, yeah. Now I just need a goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just, just a couple more, just a couple more. This one, I don't understand how it's a thing, right? Right, here we go. And it was started in 2004, but it is still there because I checked it. It's under the title Waking People Up, right? So back in <laughs> yeah, back in 2004, a guy co-founded a service called Snoozer, a web-based wake-up call service. So basically, you sign up for the service. They call your phone at a specified time to wake you up. He reported in 2019, the company had generated well over a million dollars in revenue, which works out about five and a half thousand a month since 2004. I don't get how this is a thing. But but how I don't understand how exactly they wake you up then. They just call your phone. Oh, as opposed to setting an alarm. This is exactly it. Now, again, have I got the I'm going to send you a picture. I, I actually logged onto the website to see if it was still a thing. And it is now. They they offer three plans, right? So you can get sign up for a free plan, which is ten free wake up calls or phone reminders, and that's free for ten. Okay. You can then have monthly, which is unlimited wake up calls, unlimited <laughs> reminder calls, unlimited reminder SMSs for six dollar ninety nine a month. Or you can have <laughs> It's like Netflix for even yeah. lazier people. Or yearly, which again, you get the unlimited wake up, unlimited reminders, and unlimited SMS for sixty four ninety nine. So it's twenty two percent of the monthly pricing. So, and and I love it. I've sent you the picture. I think it's got the arrow saying most popular. You know, like you get on the apps where they try, <laughs> try to charge you a hundred dollars for it, like. <laughs> and they tell you this is the best value for money. Yeah. <laughs> so I honestly don't get this. If you've got a phone that they're calling. Surely you've got an alarm. I don't, maybe they just want to speak to someone. Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I kind of, I, when you said 2004, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it a little bit more, I guess. But then again, even then, everybody had like alarms on there. Did you, did you yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't remember 2004 that well. Did you, yeah, did you have clocks, mobile phones yeah. with alarms no, on your phone? Back then? No. I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> no, but you, you've all got alarm clocks. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. Watches, like, I, watches used to have an alarm. Yeah, that's the thing. I used to just have an alarm clock. So, yeah, I don't get this one. Maybe it's because people snooze their alarms. And if you've got someone screaming down the phone at you that you need to get out of bed because you've got a meeting at 10, then, yeah, maybe, maybe I get it. But, yeah, weird one. Don't don't know how it's got place 
in the modern modern world. Yeah. I reckon the business only exists because of people that forgot they cancelled their subscriptions from maybe, 2004. Maybe, maybe. But $5,500 a month since 2004 roughly works out. It's incredible. Yeah, that one's that. Yeah, that that's pretty nuts. I don't know why they're still about. Yeah, maybe you should use them. Maybe people like the reminders. Maybe people like them nicer than their their alarm call in the morning. There's, there's, there's nothing more soul destroying than that default iPhone alarm going off in the morning, is there? <laughs> maybe we should sign up for the free plan and see what it's like. Yeah, yeah, and say to them, "Can you Actually, wake I'm, me up?" I might yeah. do it. I might do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Right, couple, just a couple more. Uh, this should be quick. This one, I actually like the idea of, right? And I think, it, again, I, I I do, without joke, think it's great. Turbulenceforecast.com. Right. So, so if you're looking to go on a flight, so this is a guy called Peter. He's a founder of Turbulence Forecast. And again, website's still there. I think it's just obviously improved over time. He's been forecasting turbulence for over 13 years. And it'll give you a personal one-on-one briefing of what you might expect on your upcoming flight via email. He writes each and every forecast personally. And with over 8,500 written so far, there's a no questions asked refund policy. Now, the charge is between $25 to $56 an order. And so if you look, if you think he's had 8,500 orders in 13 years, so it works out to be, what, 650, 650 per year? So yeah, he has 650 orders per year at his lowest price point. That's well over a thousand dollars a month. Um, now again, this chap, I'll, I'll send you the, the, the pic. You you go onto the website and you've got options. You've got do you want it personalised? Do you want it automated, as in computer generated? Um, you can specify if it's a one way flight, a round trip. So yeah, if you're going on a flight and you want to know if you're getting turbulence, this is a site for you. Now. <laughs> I mean, the, the the only thing I'm going to answer this one is why. Well, some people don't like flying. So so, they... Don't like flying, I agree. But whether or not he tells you that there's going to be turbulence in your flight isn't changing whether or not there's turbulence on your flight. So is it because people want to know whether or not they need to pop an additional sleeping tablet? It could be. I mean, the thing is, you know, you'll often get the, the captain on the plane say, we're you know, we expect a smooth flight or we're about to hit bumpy weather. Maybe somebody wants to know almost exactly right for the first half hour it's going to be fine then for the next 40 minutes it might be quite bumpy then it's going to be very bumpy but don't worry it's going to be calm after that yeah maybe you can prep prepare yourself mentally for, for the flight I, people, I like people, people on bbc news don't get the weather right people on <laughs> bbc news every day don't get the weather right and you're going to pay here we go comparisons long layover multi-day itineraries 99 dollars 99 cents for somebody to not get the turbulence correct well, maybe what what I could do is maybe we'll see if if um maybe on the next holiday maybe we should each pay for one and see if how accurate it is. Maybe we could review it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what well, well, what happens if they're completely wrong? How do you prove that there was no turbulence on your flight and get your money back? I mean, there must be something that turns well, around I, and protects you. Surely. Again, I'd ne- I'd need to have a look at the website, but I reckon I reckon he's obviously in the business. He's probably worked in aviation. You can probably prove based on reports you know, wherever there was. But again, surely does it not depend on the type of plane you're on? Does it not depend on how how high the plane was flying at the time? I don't know. But I, I think as an idea, as a business idea, again, I think it's great. You know, it's yeah, something... No, I, oh, no, I, no, I, no, I think it's great. <laughs> in, you know, in the sense of it's a very much a gap in the market. Yeah, it's a gap in the market that didn't need to be filled. I agree with you there. Like, I, I, well, a flight, thousand... a flight, a flight leaves soon, 12 hours or fewer. Please rush an extra $15. Well, 12, 12 grand a year for 13 years probably says that there, there, is, a, yeah, there is a market. that's true, yeah. 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 All right, and the final two, one, one because it's very applicable to me at the moment, is binge watch superhero movies. Right, okay, well, yeah, I'm happy yeah. to do this. Don't even need to know how much you get yeah. paid. Now, in 2019, <laughs> a cable TV.com offered one Marvel fan $1,000 to watch 20 Marvel movies back-to-back. Okay. Take 40 hours to do, and you'd have three days in which to complete it. I mean, I've almost done that recently. I've, I've subscribed to Disney Plus again just to watch um, – there was a couple of – oh, it was mainly to watch um, – the, the the new ones that came out last year, like I hadn't watched um, Black Widow or, Sh- or Shang-Chi. And also there's a new Beatles documentary on it. But while I did that, and even though I've got them on DVD, I can never be bothered to drag them out. So I've been re-watching the films again. Right, okay. I've done two or three, and I, I could have, I, I've done this for free. I could have made a grand. <laughs> 
So, sorry, can I, how many films did you say? 40? No, it was 20 at the time in 2019. 20, right. Okay, yeah. sorry, sorry. I thought you said 40. I was like, there's definitely not no. enough hours, 72 hours to finish. 40. No, it would, it would take you 40 hours to do it, and they were given right. three days to do it in. Um, right, okay, okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd have been snapping at the chance to do that. Yeah, because, you know, you still get your nine hours sleep, to be fair, over the course of the three days, just as long <laughs> yeah. as you watch the films yeah. uh, while, you, while you're doing it, while you not doing anything else. And the thing is, they're all different enough to be fun to watch back to back, I'd think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not mad at this one. I could happily do this. Okay, and the last one here was, um, and I remember this only after read, reading this, but I did remember the story now. It's called The Million Dollar Homepage, right? And it was um, in August 2005, a college student in the UK set up a web page consisting of a million pixels in a thousand by thousand grid. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, with the intention of selling each, each pixel for a pound. On the 1st of January 2006, the final 1,000 pixels were put up for auction on eBay and the auction closed on the 11th of January with a winning bid of 38,000... Uh, sorry, it was a dollar he was charging and it was $38,100 that bought the final tally to $1,037,100. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now, wasn't this where they just sold like advertising space basically yeah and and unfortunately i didn't get the picture but i'll try to find it so the, the website looks a mess <laughs> because yeah, yeah you know you got random but again what what a great idea and this was back in 2005 you know so we, we think about what we're doing with online real estate now you know this guy had the that idea right at the start of the boom so yeah yeah, so, so yeah. again i think the people that buy it if it's only a dollar you're probably having to pay you're not just going to buy one pixel, are you? You're probably still paying anywhere between 10 to maybe $50. But I guess you were doing it to be part of something new and fun. At the yeah, time. yeah. I think this was more so like a marketing thing as, any, as, as opposed to anything else. You know, people throw away $10 here or there on bets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So to kind of say you were part of this brand new thing, you know, this internet, and, and buying pixels on a web page, you could probably see why people would be on it. Now, here we go. I'm just going to send you what it looked like. Yeah, I'm on the website now. Oh, you see it? You yeah, see it? yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's a mess. brilliant. It's brilliant. It looks very, it looks very off the time as well. But yeah, it's 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 great. But you know, the guy made a million dollars by selling pixels on a on a on a homepage. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty impressed with that one. But I, I, as well, I like that because the idea was so fresh at the time. Like if you google yeah, it now, yeah. all of a sudden there's loads of people that have taken the idea and then run with it for like NFT projects and that sort of thing. But that was <laughs> yeah. something that was as well. You said it was to pay for his like education. Yeah, yeah, pay paying his way through university by selling a million pixels for a dollar each. And he's done that and more. I mean, the guy has made a million dollars from selling <laughs> pixels. <laughs> Yeah, no, you know that maybe it's the original like um, cryptocurrency NFT thing, and we just didn't realise it was happening. Well, that's all I had. So I hope this has given people some ideas on how they can make a fortune earning money in weird ways. Like I said, we're still up for selling bath water or farts or fresh air. If you want some English air, let us know from, from our <laughs> hotels. <laughs> yeah, anything from yourself and anything we said, Lou. Yeah, no, I think I think you know there's a couple that I'd happily to happily do. I mean, if anybody does need any mourners at any funerals or you know that sort of thing, I think I'd be pretty happy with that one. I'm um, queuing up. Again, you know, Saturday, don't want to sit in a queue. I'm happy to do that. But yeah, I mean, some of them are a little bit mad. Um, but some of them some of them are a cool fill in the market for something that you probably needed but didn't realise you needed. Yeah, I'm down for the sleeping or the binge-watching superhero movies. So yeah, binge-watching <laughs> superhero movies, is, you know, that's a yes in and of itself. If you've got a need for that, let me know. <laughs> cool. So I think we'll finish there. Going right back to the start, don't forget to give uh, Offtopia podcast Hey, listen, we'll, we'll link in our episode description. If you want to comment on anything we've said or let us know um, if you've got any ideas for future episodes, contact us at castingviewspod at gmail.com or we're on Twitter at castingviews. So we'll finish with, we know there's a lot of podcasts from which you can choose. So we thank you for listening to Casting Views. 